Hello everybody, it's Larry and welcome to today's video. And I promised you a good video today and we're going to deliver for it. We're going to talk about super clusters. That's right, Superman is going to be doing your clustering. <laughs> well, maybe not Superman himself, but it's going to be really super, I promise you. And that's actually the name of it, so it is super clustering. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, take the moment, pause this and go down and subscribe. Click the bell notification and that way you're notified when all the videos uh, come out. If you're not a supporter on Patreon, if these videos have helped you, consider going out and supporting. Even a donation of a dollar helps tremendously. So help us keep bringing you videos you know, that help you and that help other people. You can be my partner in helping other people as well. So consider going out to Patreon and do that. Let's get right to the super clusters. Now, uh, this is a masterclass video. There are some assumptions of knowledge with genetic affairs and with ancestry. But even still, I, I do want to go over some basic portions because it's kind of like in calculus. Even in calculus, they give you you know a little bit as a refresher as you go into it. Uh, so we're not going to get into all the little things on genetic affairs. We're going to assume those, but we are going to refresh some of the important parts. So if you run your cluster analysis, you come back and you get some results. And the results look something like this. You get your clusters, and you know you have to go out and figure out how they're related. Now, the manual recommends like PPM, PPP, PMP, MMM. And I see on Facebook boards that people are saying, hey, can I rename these surnames? I really want to rename these surnames. Well, I'm going to take this moment to say I caution you against using the surnames here. And don't get me wrong. I, I When it first came out and I was doing this, I was so excited to have these clusters automatically done. I wanted to label them with the surnames. But the MMM, PMP, these are better in the long run. And I'm going to kind of show you why. So when we come up here, I'm going to look at a fan chart. And we're going to look at my tree, familysearch.org. And so, you know, we have the fan tree, and the fan tree is the better view to understand this. I would show you at Ancestry, but there's not a fan tree view, hint, hint. So we're going to come out, and we're going to look at the MMM. And so we can go maternal, 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 and that's Emma Boatman. So a lot of people would want to come up here and name, name this cluster Boatman, okay, for MMM. Now, the reason we don't want to do that okay is if we hover over Emma Boatman here uh, family search has this nice little feature uh, that you can hover over it and see that little fan uh, if you're on a phone you probably can't but on a computer if you're watching on TV you can and remember you can see our channel on fire TV by going up to the App Store and go through education and get it there or from amazon.com so come in here we've got an Emma Boatman look at this Boatman's one two three four five six Boatman's but look over here, it fits you. One, two, three, four, five. Hayes, one, two, three, four, five. In fact, every one of these is gonna have five of that surname. So it's almost, <laughs> yes, Boatman has one more in that name, but there's so many more surnames. There's Doggett, Haynes, Brewer, Hal, Halsey, Brooks, Cato, uh, Campbell, Walker, Studebaker, Dilworth, Busey, all these others. So if you come over here and you were to name this Boatman, your matches might be Long, Boosie, Haynes, Fitzhugh, Collins, Collins, Fitzhugh, you know, Hayes, Collins, Fitzhugh. You may not even see a Boatman in there. And so this might be a little misleading if you name that Boatman, okay? Even though it isn't Emma Boatman. So what my recommendation would be do, if you like to put the surname there, go ahead and put the MMM in that, that identifier, PPP, PPM, because this is going to help you in the long run. And I'm going to show you how we're going to go back to the ancestry on this one. So PPM and PPP. So if I look at here, we come up PPP. That's William Brown and PPM. That's Carolyn Clark. All right. So the cluster, I've got a cluster right here, which is the Browns from here up and the Clarks from here up because I've got the PPP and the PPM. Now, if I was uh, labeled that and said, OK, uh, right here, you know, Brown and Clark. Uh, if I would have turned around and said, you know, uh, this is Brown and this is Clark, well, okay, the Brown, the Brown is, so, you know, so much more. Uh, technically, it's right, but, you know, it, we're going to miss out, like we said, on all these other surnames we don't want to miss out on. So I would go with PPM, PPP, and as you're going back and looking into your tree to see, it's a lot easier to go PPM and PPP to identify these two specifics as the cornerstone for your clusters than to say brown because I'm a brown you know there's a brown and there's you know other people brown there's uh, it's just really a little bit easier so I think in the long run 
if you feel the need to put surname, you can go ahead and put you know Brown and and Clark, and uh, but go ahead and put PP with it and PPM with it. I think you'll find that better in the long run. All right, now let's get into the full page. This is what you see. You know, this one is you know kind of thinned down, uh, but we want to look. This is what you see when you get back your auto cluster analysis. Just like before, we see our colors for that's our groupings. But the important part, and again, this is the foundational building up to the super clusters. That's coming, so stick with me. So we've got all this information right here in the gray dots and the part that's in the white dots. Those are clues that are just as big and just as important as the clusters themselves. I know we're all excited about, you know, hey, I'm going to, here's the groups and, and matching the groups and working off these groups. Don't get me wrong. That's great for clustering. But in the super clusters, it's going to make a big difference that you understand how these gray boxes work and what they mean. So let's look at it. Across the top, you have a list of names. That same list of names is written down the side to make this matrix. So person number one going across and person number one going down are the same. Two and two, three and three, four and four, five and five. That's why these dots are dark because that's where the person intersects themselves. That's why you also see this mirrored pattern because the, this top section over here is a mirror of this section. Okay, Because they meet themselves. The names across the top and across the side are the same. So it takes each one of these people and then matches them versus everybody in the list. So let's take this person here. You know, this group of people here didn't match this orange, okay? But they did match these in green. But as we scroll on down, look at this, these gray boxes. They also match everybody here. The person could, instead of being matched to green, could have been matched in this cluster because they're actually in both. Okay, so they're actually in both. So let's go in here. We know that we had PPP, PPM. Okay, they're in both clusters. So they're actually down below. These matches are down below William and Caroline. I'm already getting clues simply by knowing that they match both. And by telling what each one of these clusters are, does this person match this cluster and this cluster? Do they match all three of these clusters? I start being able to tell I mean, it's a version of triangulation, for lack of a better term. It's not triangulation in numbers, but if I know that they match somebody, you know, underneath Caroline and underneath William, then they have to be from this point down. And so you start looking and seeing these matches, and it gives you very strong clues on where they go in your tree. That's not the best part. That, that's a little piece of gold right there. We're getting ready to get into the platinum level, folks. This is a super cluster, so let's get to it. The super clusters has been renamed hybrid clustering because it's really a hybrid. It puts it all together. Uh, originally, it was called super clustering. I still call it super clustering. Uh, it is 100 credits. It does take a more powerful computer to run. It can't run on, on the simple one, and it's going to pull it from two different places. So it actually has to do a pull on one, a pull on the other, and then analyze it together and then give you the summation results. So uh, it does take 100 credits to do it instead of you know 50. But it's going to take my ancestry profile information and, in this case, my family tree DNA profile information, and it's going to do them together. It's going to put them together in one giant auto cluster. Now, because they're from two different sites, it's not going to put the FTDNA people inside that cluster. Wish it would. Can't do that because they're two different sites. But it can give us the clues. Now, see here highlighted in the red box? Okay. This is the area that from this matrix and this matrix, they match. Look at these people who are matching them both. This person matches all these in orange, but also all these in green. Over here in green, now, if you're looking on a phone, this is going to be hard to see. But if you're on a computer or watching on the TV, you'll be able to see these real clearly. They've got the letter F inside all the boxes that are FTDNA. Now, when you're looking at that, you know, this is what you see. But you'll have to look inside and all these in the cluster, they'll have the Fs in them or they won't. If they have F, then that means they're from FTDNA. If they don't, it means they're from Ancestry. Okay? So you're going to go through there. You're going to look at all those. Now what you also want to do is you want to look right here. See, it says N. Okay, here it is mirrored on this side. Here's N. N means it's a common name, which means it's the same person. This person and this person, they're the same. They're in both. This one person 
is the same. We found a common name. That's real important because now we can start merging. Not we can't literally merge it because they're on two separate sites. But for the purposes of our records, if we're taking it off, like you know, the leads method, we're used to pulling off an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we can start taking this and manipulating that data and merging these into a supercluster between these different clusters. So we want to look and see are they matching the people in these clusters. We're now able to take our FT DNA list and we're going to be able to assign them based on our ancestry colors okay just like in the leads method it's doing it automatically for us and we can validate that we didn't make mistakes you know in copying it over or putting a color in there or stuff like that it's going to do it for us automatically and we're going to get confirmation with the names now if you miss the ends up here because they're they're in red rather than in the others uh, they're they, cause they're really meant to stand out. You see some F's down here showing you their FT DNA uh, matches. If you scroll on down in the page down below in text, it will actually, you know, group the surnames and group the people. And if it has the same surname, it'll tell you that their ancestry here and their information, here's theirs and FT DNA. You can also get trees that overlap so if you look up in here you see what look like christmas trees they're inside these boxes they're really hard to see even on a computer but uh, they you know they're just darker boxes they're not f's and they're not n's they're not letters it's, it's a little tree icon and that means that that person has a tree so if these people in this group have a tree then it can actually stitch them together and it will actually now this is really cool it will actually take that super cluster information and where possible, and you have common names, if these common names have trees that it can start snagging into, it will actually create like a through lines, the auto tree, which is what Janika Farish calls their version of the through lines. It will actually be able to stitch those together from both sites. Now, it's not going to be able to do that often. I mean, so I'm not going to tell you, hey, go out and do that. It can make a master tree. But in certain searches, it can. And I've actually had some that put, you know, uh, probably 60% of my tree was Ancestry and the other 40% was FTDNA. And you click on the, you know, the links for the one took me to the FTDNA site and the others took me to Ancestry. Now that's for certain searches. It won't be like that for all searches, but the power to do that is really amazing. Now, one last piece of power for the super cluster. I mean, if being able to just take the FTDNA clusters and kind of identify them to ancestry clusters weren't enough. Now you can take some of the power of the tools on FTDNA, leveraging the power of the tool that you had on ancestry. So you take your color coding and your clustering from ancestry. And if you identify some people in FTDNA, FTDNA on their match list have some filtering. One of the filters is to be able to click on a certain person. Okay, so maybe we click on this common name that we found that we know is over here. And you say, give me everybody equal to and it'll only give you the matches that person. So now you can identify through your export because down at the bottom it'll allow you to export that list. You can export all the people in that group. You can also say, click on a person and say, give me all the people not equal to this person. Okay, and that will give you a list. So you can start using, and, that, and the not tool is pretty powerful. I mean, knowing information that we talked about last week, you know, if you have all of this group but are not that group. Now, FTDNA doesn't let you do compound like that. That would be literally amazing. <laughs> but it, they don't let you do that. But we can now take our ancestry, our ancestry DNA cluster information, identify it over to FTDNA, find some of these shared people, some of these shared clusters. So maybe I don't have a common name. But I know that some of these people match in both. Okay, so I find these people over in FTDNA, and I click on them, and then do those searches for and and or for not. Uh, that's that really gets you the ability to take some of the best tools from both sites and really dig in to your matches. And I know that on FTDNA and some of the stuff that I've done with this, just in testing it. I've made some huge gatherings over taking my ancestry clusters, which is a literal gold mine, and taking those over and taking that information by saying, hey, that person's in this cluster. This person's in that cluster. I can take all those people that I'm looking at. When I first look at them, there's this big match list, like, what am I going to do with this? 
But being able to use the Genetic Affairs hybrid cluster and making a super cluster out of it and being able to merge these together and see who matches in each one of these clusters, I'm now able to take that knowledge and start applying it over an FTDNA and figuring out how all these people are matched to me that I didn't know. And the great thing about FTDNA is their emails are there, so you can click on it and make some contact with them. That's, uh, I mean, this really kind of gives you the best of all worlds, the FTDNA, 23andMe, Ancestry, leveraging the power of the clusters on Ancestry. And again, it all comes from genetic affairs. Again, I'm, it, it's super clustering. And that was the first name for it. It's hybrid auto clustering. Uh, <laughs> I just like calling it super clustering because it's super. It's really amazing. Hybrid just doesn't, you know, doesn't make it sound like Superman. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed by now, why not? <laughs> click the subscribe button. Click the bell notification to be notified. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon. Your support means a lot. And if you want to continue seeing videos like this, and these videos are helping you, consider supporting. Even minimal support means a whole lot. All right. Thank you, guys. I hope you uh, have a great week. Thank you for listening. Appreciate y'all. Can you believe... Uh, 6,000, yeah, I think it's up to 6,400 uh, subscribers. Uh, it's all you guys. It's all word of mouth. It's all there. I, I'm, it just, uh, it's, it hasn't been a year yet. And uh, I remember when we, sorry, I'm rambling here, but remember when we first started, I, I was really excited. We just had 10 views. <laughs> and then the cluster video had 33,000. Uh, folks, this is clustering on steroids. This is super clustering. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. We got some better coming. I'm telling you what, the Masterclass series, we've got some really good stuff. That's why I wanted to break them out. Uh, and, and down in the comments below, let me know. Do you like it broken out like this? I'm, you know, We've got the beginners each day so that people can catch up. We've got some that are intermediate level and one Masterclass. Would you like to see more Masterclasses and, and fewer of one of the others? Uh, I don't want to cut out the beginners because, you know, they're just getting into this. Do we want it more intermediates, maybe one less intermediate, one more master class? Tell me kind of how, do you not like the multiples coming out each day? Do I need to, like, have, you know, beginners on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, intermediates on Tuesday, Thursday, and the master class on Saturday, for instance? L let me know what you think about the scheduling. I, I want to really kind of fit what you uh, need. I look at the, you know, the the results on YouTube and see when people are looking, how people are viewing them. And I don't know how it's taken on the other side because I see them and I schedule them and they come out. I, I want to know what it's like on the other side. You know, when you're getting the notification, like on a Wednesday and you get three notifications <laughs> or on a Monday and a Friday when you get two notifications, how, how's that working? Is one of them considered noise? Cause I don't know how many of you are watching the introductory level. So, you know, is that something you'd like to see me break into another channel for the beginners? Uh, because you know, it's going to come out so often to catch them up. What, what do you want me to do on that? Let me know. I mean, this is still our community. We're growing. We're not so big that I can, you know, I can't reach out and, and, uh, you know, communicate back and forth with you, get some feedback and help improve this. I really want to do what's best, uh, for all of y'all. Uh, for the, as many as we can. We want to touch as many people as we can with this information. Anyway, uh, so just leave me that information down in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to some feedback on that. And for those of you in the Facebook group, you can comment there as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate you so much. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon.